Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. This is your Leicester City, Manchester United preview. It's on Boxing Day, half past 12 kickoff at the Kim Power Stadium. It's second against third. This is a big test for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now Leicester have been good this season. They've got a good manager in Brendan Rodgers. Brendan Rodgers has been Leicester manager now for almost two years. Was it last year he signed a five-year or was it a five-and-a-half-year contract with Leicester? He's managed a few clubs in his managerial career. Uh, before he was at Leicester, he was at Celtic. He endured a few years with Celtic. Before that, he was at Liverpool. Um, I think he endured one good season with Liverpool. Before that, he was at Swansea. And before, he was at Reading and Watford. Leicester were also very consistent under Claudio Ranieri. They won the Premier League under his guidance back in 2016. Brendan Rodgers has made quite a few signings since he became Leicester manager. Earlier on this year, they brought four Fanner in. They brought Timothy Castagny in. Last year, uh, Rodgers brought uh, Dennis Pryor in. He brought James Justin in. Got Yari Tillemans on a permanent deal because at one point Leicester had him on loan. He also brought Perez in. And Leicester have got some good players that we need to be aware of. Now, Jamie Vardy, he's obviously one of their key players. It's been confirmed he's going to be fit for Saturday. It's good the way Jamie Vardy's risen up from non-league football. Ian Acho, he's one of their key players. Uh, certainly James Madison is one of their key players. He's been at Leicester now for a few years. Leicester paid around £20 million for him from Norwich. Was it in the summer of 2018? Uh, Ndidi, he's been at Leicester a few years. He's one of their key players. Ricardo Pereira. He's not going to be available for the game. He's out with injury until January, I think. Soy Unku, if I pronounce his name correctly, um, he's out with injury. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be available for this game. Harvey Barnes, he's one of their key players. Don't forget, Man United have inquired about his availability. They've obviously got Marco Brighton, they've got Fuchs. Um, I still believe Wes Morgan is still with them. They've got a good goalkeeper in Schmeichel. Leicester have let quite a few good players go. During the summer, they lost Ben Chewell to Chelsea. They also lost Angolo Kante and Danny Drinkwater to Chelsea. They lost Harry Maguire to us in the summer of 2019. Harry Maguire probably will be reuniting with his former club Leicester on Saturday. And they lost Raheed Mahrez to Manchester City in the summer of 2018. Leicester won their last league game. They beat Tottenham by two goals to nil. We did beat Leicester last season twice, did the double over them, beating them on the final day of last season 2-0 at the Kim Power and we're beating them 1-0 at Old Trafford. Now we're coming into this game 
on the back of a 2-0 win against Everton in the Carabao Cup quarter final. Obviously, it was two late goals from Edison Cavani and Anthony Martial. So now we are into the Carabao Cup semi-final and we do play Manchester City. I think that's on the 4th of January. Solskjaer made around nine changes uh, from the 6-2 win against Leeds. And we know how imperative it is for us to get our first trophy on the board under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, Solskjaer was saying prior to the Everton game that our players are desperate to learn how to win trophies. We've been very, very good away from home. You know, we have won our last 10 away games in a row in the Premier League. And when we beat Sheffield United uh, the other week, we became the first team to win six successive away games after conceding first in a single Premier League season. So we beat Leicester on Saturday. That will be 11 wins in a row away from home in the Premier League. Like I said, we won our last league game against Leeds. Beating them by six goals to two. Uh, that is obviously our biggest win this season. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is obviously going to make quite a few changes in this game against Leicester from the 2-0 win against Everton recently. Um, I think David De Gea will be back in goal. Uh, David De Gea didn't play against Everton, it was Dean Henderson. Uh, I think Alan Wambasaka should be available. He didn't play against Everton. I think he's been injured, hasn't he? It was actually Axel Tuanzebe that played uh, right back against Everton. To be fair, put a good performance out. Uh, will Lindelof come back into the team or will Solskjaer stick with Eric Bay? To Bay's credit, he did well against Everton. Showed that ability to play out from the back and defensively did good. Uh, will Fred come into the team because he didn't play any part against Everton? Um, at Tominway, he's out with a groin problem. Um, he sustained this in our 6-2 win against Leeds. Obviously got man of the match against Leeds because obviously he scored two goals and he also got an assist. Definitely his best game in a Manchester United shirt. Luke Shaw's obviously back. He did come on against Everton, didn't start. It was Telez that started. Luke Shaw did come off injured, though, in our 6-2 uh, win against Leeds. He initially just come back from a hamstring problem. Will Martial and Rashford start this game against Leicester? Uh, they did come on against Everton, but obviously they didn't start. On my next video, I will be giving you my start and level prediction for this game. Solskjaer has done his press conference, by the way, uh, building up to this game. I haven't actually watched it, but Solskjaer said Man United must ignore title talk. And he's also come out and said we could easily concede four goals on Saturday against Leicester, but um, I'm going to watch his press conference after this video. Now, after Leicester, we have got Wolves at home. Should be winning that because Wolves haven't been that consistent this season. And after that, it's Aston Villa on New Year's Day. Then it's Man City in the Carabao Cup semi-final. Uh, we, got, we played them in the semi-final last season, didn't we? Lost the first leg 3-1, won the second leg 1-0, but obviously we went out on aggregate. And then after that, it's Watford in the FA Cup, I think. And then I think we are away, away to Liverpool. So games are coming up thick and fast for Manchester United.
Now, there's a lot of Manchester United fans that are now demanding Oli in. But earlier on this season, it was totally comparison. There was a lot of Manchester United fans demanding Oli out of the football club. It's been up and down, hasn't it, really? You know, we've enjoyed good periods and we've also enjoyed bad periods. But we are certainly enjoying a good period at the moment. And, you know, last season we went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions. We was 14 unbeaten in the Premier League. And I have been saying to you a lot, haven't I, that Solskjaer isn't the right manager for Man United. And I still don't know if he is, even though we have been in good vein of form recently. If this good vein of form continues to February, March time, then I will start to believe even more he is the right manager. And Solskjaer's priority is leading the club to long-term success. He does deserve more time. He does deserve at least two more transfer windows. You know, the January transfer window will be his fifth transfer window as Manchester United manager. And it's good that we are making plans for next year. Hopefully, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will get the backing that he deserves. Uh, because during the summer transfer window, he wasn't backed enough by the board. And Solskjaer showed his frustration to our board quite a few times. But none of our managers have been backed enough since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. And this is one of the main explanations why our board's been one of the biggest problems at the club. But uh, Woodward has come out several times to support Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Despite us having a poor start to the season and despite us getting knocked out of the Champions League, we've obviously changed our transfer strategy. Well, Woodward's changed our transfer strategy. We're looking to strengthen up in four positions. We're looking to recommend the right winner in. We're looking to get a defensive midfielder in. We're looking to get a centre-half in and we're also looking to get a right-back in. There has been a lot of players on our agenda. Uh, by the way, I just want to give you some news on Moises Casido. So, reportedly, Casido is undergoing his medical with Manchester United and he's set to sign a five-year contract. Man United are going to pay around £4.5 million for his services. It said earlier on today that Chelsea are looking to hijack our move for Moises Casido. They've been in talks. Um, it mentions that Brighton and Newcastle have been interested, but Casido has already revealed that his favourite club is Manchester United. And... Dario Extra recently said that we were in advance talks with Independiente Del Val and Fabrizio Romano recently confirmed that Casido to Man United was close. And we have outbid AC Milan and RB Leipzig. Independiente Del Val uh, actually said that they wanted around 5.5 million or something with add-ons included and they wanted a 20% sell-on clause. He made his debut for Independiente del Val around 14 months ago. He's played like four times for Ecuador. He scored in Ecuador's 4-2 win against Uruguay. But yeah, looking like he's going to be our first signing for the Jan January transfer window. He's going to be the second Ecuadorian to represent Manchester United. Um, earlier on, I give you the news on David Alaba. Uh, you already know the news on Jack Grealish. Uh, I think we're probably going to go in for Jaden Sancho as well next year. But we're not only going to focus on the incomings, we're also going to focus on the outgoings as well because there is still Deadwood at the football club that we need to get rid of. 
I think next year we'll be looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We'll be looking to offload Phil Jones. We'll be looking to get rid of Marcus Rojo. I think we'll also offload Sergio Romero. Sergio Romero is now our third choice goalkeeper. I think Agalo will leave when his loan expires in January. Uh, Mata could be sold next year. Bay could be sold next year. I like Eric Bay. He's a good centre half, but he's just too injury prone. Uh, there's obviously been rumours of Daniel James leaving. Matic, he could be offloaded. There's obviously been a lot of rumours of Paul Pobber leaving as well. Uh, there's been rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan because Brandon Williams is now our third choice left back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. Brandon Williams seldom plays now. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been Manchester United manager now for just over two years. You know, not so long ago, it was his two-year anniversary. This is his second full season at Man United. And already, he's got us to a semi-final. Um, he did well in his first full season last season because he got us qualification for the Champions League, got us third, and he guided us to three semi-finals. Uh, we've not yet won a trophy under his guidance. Uh, we haven't won a trophy for almost four years. Solskjaer um, has actually said a few times earlier on this season that Man United can win the Premier League. But obviously now he's saying, you know, you can't talk about a title bid until March. Uh, Roy Keane said after the 6-2 win against Leeds that Man United can challenge Liverpool for the Premier League title this season. We are certainly in the race, but I'm just very, very sceptical that we'll win it. I think definitely number 21 is coming, just not this season. It could be next season or the season after. Because <laughs> I just don't think as it our squad, as it stands at the moment, is not good enough to win the league, but it's certainly good enough for a top four finish. But... Like I've said, if we can finish in the top four this season and if we can win a trophy, that would represent a very good season for Man United and Solskjaer, then that would give us something to build on. Ollie's under contract with the football club until 2022. And he's managed over 100 games for the club in all competitions. But I have got to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a lot of credit. I think his approach to some games has been good. He's made good signings since he got appointed in as Man United manager. He spent over £200 million at the football club. Um, he's got rid of some of the deadwood as well since he got recommended in. He's showed tactical flexibility in a lot of the big games. So there's definitely positives to take from his tenure. Um, his decision making in some games concerns me because he has made mistakes and that's obviously cost us games. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer hasn't got that proven pedigree as a manager. Obviously before he came to us he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder but Mulder are a big club other. And before then he was at Cardiff and he endured a very very short tenure with Cardiff. The main explanation he got sat from Cardiff is because he ended up getting them relegated. Um, but Solskjaer, you can say in a way, has been lucky not to be sat. Obviously not reflecting how good we've done recently, but you know you can say like he was lucky not to be sat after the 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. He was lucky not to be sat when we got knocked out of the Champions League. You know, he was lucky not to be sat... Reflecting how poor our home form has been. Um, he was lucky not to be sacked at the first part of last season. I said to you, our board have softened their stance on him because he is a club legend. You know what I mean? Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Three managers have been sacked since the Ferguson era and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal 
and Jose Mourinho. And we're not even really known as a sacking football club. You know, we've spent over £1 billion on players in the last eight years, is it? And we've brought around 36 players in since Sir Alex Ferguson left. You know, under the David Moyes era, we obviously brought Fellaini and Man Juan Mata in. Under Louis van Gaal era, we brought players like Snydlin in, Sebastian Schweinsteiger, Di Maria, uh, Falcao, Memphis Depay, Rojo, Damian, Herrera, Valdez, Romero, Martial, Shaw... Brought a lot of players in Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. He recommended 11 players in to the football club. A few players are left who Jose Mourinho brought in, but a lot of this team is Jose Mourinho. So let's put into the equation Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's inheriting them. Isn't there? I certainly think we can get back being competitive. But like I said, we'll never be the team that was under Ferguson because no one at Man United will replicate Ferguson's legacy. And no one will last as long as Ferguson did. Ferguson endured 27 years at Manchester United, won a total of 38 major honours, including 13 Premier League titles. But Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. So it just that just proves, doesn't it, that it takes some manager's time to settle in and get things right. Uh, like and another one, you know, Jurgen Klopp, he didn't settle in straight away at Liverpool. His record after what his first twenty eight, twenty nine games was poor. But look how good Jurgen Klopp is now. Um, he's won four trophies as Liverpool manager. But if it obviously wasn't for Sir Alex Ferguson we'd have hardly had any success. Probably none. Because before Ferguson came into the equation, we was very, very inconsistent. You know. Um, earlier on, I give you the news, didn't I, on Mauricio Potocino. Uh, Mauricio Potocino is expected to become PSG's new manager. Uh, because PSG have sat Thomas Tuchel. Potocino now has rejected Manchester United. As you all know, there has been a lot of rumours of Mauricio Potocino coming in. He's been the favourite to take over at the club. He was the favourite to take over after Jose Mourinho got sat. But obviously we decided to go with Solskjaer instead of Potocino because the way we saw it is that, you know, obviously Solskjaer knows the culture of the club. He's a former player and Pochettino doesn't really know all about the club. That's the way we saw it. He's a good manager, Pochettino. My only element of concern about him, he's not won anything in terms of silverware. But he did enjoy five and a half, five and a half good years with Tottenham, didn't he? Did Pochettino. Um, he also did well at Southampton before he was at Tottenham. And before Southampton, he was at Espanyol. So there you go. So um, on my next video, like I've already said, I will be giving you my starting 11 prediction for this game against Leicester. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.